are you, my friend? Fabulous. Uh, for, before we even talk about anything today, that shirt, man, is is fantastic. You look yeah, well rested and wearing an amazing shirt. It's a fish shirt. It is. Know, a, I, there's like some jellyfish on there. Yeah, I love it, dude. It's awesome. I, I um, do come with shirts, you know. So I uh, want to jump in here today because um, over the weekend, I was walking with my wife and I was I was saying like, I'm sort of in this zone where you feel like it's Groundhog's Day over and over and over again. And cool. that one thought sort of led me down this path. And I was uh, putting together a, uh, a piece that we're doing with, with somebody else in town yeah. about entrepreneurs. And yeah. we're doing a story that's coming out this week about this uh, gentleman on the east side, uh, Nico Nicolaitis, who does knives. And he's like a 23-year-old kid who quit his job in manufacturing to make knives in his backyard. And he makes these amazing knives and if you have one of his there is only one right he makes his hand so cool. and, right and then that led me back to the the moonshot journal and this idea of like finding something that gets you up every day yeah. and i saw this morning that on linkedin you guys are doing a webinar for franchisees and yep. and i wanted to kind of pick your brain not necessarily on the nuts and bolts of how to start a franchise but yeah. more like your lead in to the webinar i thought was very astute it's like what does it take to run a big B and, and I kind of want to jump in your head and go, okay, I'm game. What does it take? What, what type of human <laughs> runs one of these, these operations? Well, you know, we certainly built a system where nearly, you know, anybody can do it. Um, and, and by that, I mean, you know, it doesn't take previous business experience to, to do it. And um, cause we're taking, folks that have never been in business or maybe even if they've been in business, it's very much on the corporate side and, and, you know, running your own business is completely different. So, you know, we, we have all the systems and all that to make that part work. Um, but you know, for big B, the real important part is, do you want to be a part of your community? Right? So it's about having a business that's so embedded inside the community that you become sort of the focal point or the light of your uh, community. And if that's what, you know, you know, yanks your chain, so to speak, uh, then you're a perfect uh, big B owner operator. So we can teach you about coffee, we can teach you about business, we can teach you about systems, but in terms of being passionate about people, you gotta come to the table, you know, with that. And my, my thought this week was just, there's got to be people out there who have, you know, been laid off from jobs and, you know, are thinking, well, this was, and my wife is a perfect example of this, right? She was laid off of her job and it was the best thing that happened to her. And that's not true for everybody, but in this particular case, it was amazing and kind of opened up all of these doors. And, and I imagine there are people out there that are like, I'm not, you know, I'm okay right now, but I'm not really sure what the next chapter is. And I, that's yeah. why I wanted to talk about you know, what is this process? So what's the webinar like? And, and I, yeah. I believe, feel free to jump in and, and correct me. Yeah. It's, you know, it's typically like a nine month to year process. Is that, am I in the ballpark of? Yeah. I mean, you know, once you commit to doing a, a, a franchise, you know, in, in getting trained, finding property, getting all that organized takes about nine months for sure. Right. What happens on the webinar is you, you basically meet the leadership team, right? So, what we're trying to, to give folks, and, and there will be somewhere around 200 people on the call, what we're trying to give them is, do you think that you culturally fit inside this organization, right? That, and so, you know, the idea of whether the economics of a coffee shop uh, are real or not, I think is self-evident, right? There's, there's, right. there's, there's yes. plenty of coffee shops yes. out there, uh, corporate, independent, and everything in between. Is it an economic model that works? Absolutely, right? So, but what we're interested in doing is having folks join us on the webinar and decide whether they are a cultural fit inside this company. Because if we're a fit, I mean, boom, the sky's the limit, right? If we're not a fit, then you don't, then you don't want to hang out with us. Right. So, yep. yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that's what it's all about. That particular uh, seminar is to say, Hey, uh, are those guys qualified? Uh, am I a cultural fit for them? That, that, that's the essence of it. Uh, the idea of taking a hard right turn in your career, I have to tell you, and this happened back in uh, 08 also that when there, when there is a recession, when there is an economic hiccup, the largest leaps forward on franchising happen 
at that moment in time because there's so many people that are displaced you know somebody tells them you don't have a job anymore and then you're like oh oh no what do i do now right well when you reach that moment of oh no what do i do now you can actually choose anything you want right, right. you don't have to, you're, you're not in some slot you're not you're already you're already displaced you get to decide what you want to do next and so many people want to end up working for themselves uh, and, and you know, the little catchphrase that we use in franchising is that you will be in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And that's sort of, uh, you know, we, we, the, the we got you there. We'll, 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 we'll help you along. Do you feel that that's like a natural response to being fired in a recession? Is this kind of like, not necessarily a thumb in the eye, but like, well, I don't want to be reliant on somebody else making a decision where I get to go. Here's how I'm going to decide where I'm going to go by doing this. Totally, totally. I mean, working for the man doesn't work out, right? Because the man decides when you get to go. And so uh, now, you know, uh, owning your own business is certainly not risk free. And that's, no, that's no, and that's, I don't mean that. I just mean like, <laughs> the, you know, the interest in a recession or a depression probably yeah. comes from this swing back of like, I didn't feel control in my own career because somebody just walked in one day and handed me an envelope and told me to leave. Or in this case, probably emailed me or contacted me on Slack, right? Because we we're not doing anything face to face. And then I went, okay, now I want some control. Here's how I can get some control. Yeah. And you know, here, here's, here's some things to consider. So in the end, you're always working for somebody. Like even when you're working in a business, you're working for a consumer, right? But here's the deal. The difference between having a job and owning your business, having a job, your upside is limited by somebody else. When you own your own business, your upside is only limited by you. And that, that is the fundamental difference. So if you're somebody that wants to own your own business, your upside is yours. You get to own it. And that's so the real me, big difference. Let me ask you this question. Do you think, and, and you know, with, with your decades experience in this space, do you think everybody should at some point take this leap? Not necessarily to own a Bigby, but I mean in general of like owning or running your own business. Not everybody. It's not. It, it's really not for everybody. Um, you know, there. One, one of the things in, in owning your own business is there's an immense amount of responsibility that comes with it. So, like in your civilian life, you know, you've got responsibility to your family, to your job, and maybe a little bit to your community. When you own your own business, now you've got employees and and your community or customers, and you become a rock star in your community and stuff like that. It's an immense amount of. Uh, sort of perpetual responsibility. Now, if your shoulders are big and that's something that you thrive on, then that's what you want to do, right? But it's it's certainly not for everybody. Fair enough. And I probably shouldn't say that, but that's the truth. Well, no, well, you, but you, <laughs> but I think, I think you should because I think people should understand that, right? And, and you know, we, we've, we've reached a point in culture where too easily do we just go, everything is for everybody, right? Yeah. And I don't mean that in an inclusion, but like, you can go out for the NBA and you can own your own business and you can, you know, you can start a successful podcast. All you have to do, like the amount of classes you can take for $70 to be a millionaire overnight with your Instagram oh account is, is what I, that's what I'm talking about. Right. It's like, you should tell them that so that they understand there is some, there is some barrier to entry by that. I mean, you've got to be wired to do this thing versus the other thing. Yeah. Hey, here's a couple things too. Sure. Like if you want to own your own business, you have to know that you can be the energy source of that, right? So, so everything, if you're the business owner, you're the sun and all of the energy emanates out of you. Like you can't hire energy, you can't buy energy. It must gen be generated as this energy source from you. That's one thing. The other one is that, is this idea of faith, confidence, and courage, right? So as a small business owner, you need faith. Faith is belief, right? You need to believe uh confidence is self-reliance self-reliance is not holding other people responsible for the decisions you make and then courage is doing something you're afraid of anyway right and that yeah. that doesn't speak to going into business to doing like if you're not afraid of going into business then you're you're probably not a very bright person right but courage is doing something you're afraid of but anyway right yeah and so you need to have those those kinds of things bouncing around in you ready to go. Yeah, I, I think that the, you know, the middle one is the one that, that also I think people get tripped up on it is when they go, well, I'm, you know, I'm struggling because 
<laughs> my employees don't love the business the same I do. Well, it, they shouldn't love the same the business the same way you do because it's yours, not theirs, right? In the same way that you know I don't love M Live the same way M Live, if M Live was a person, would love M Live because right. it's not mine, right? That's right. That's right. You got it. Now, right now, so on the fourteenth, we're having a webinar, and if you if you go to Facebook or whatever, you can you can find and, and log in on that. But the other thing is, and we never do this, but we did it because it's our 25th year. We actually have an LTO on the franchise. So, it, you know, the actual cost, not of doing the whole thing, kit and caboodle, but the franchise fee is normally $20,000. And right now, if you sign up, you still pay $20,000, but what we get you is like $15,000 of equipment and inventory and all this kind of stuff to go with it. So it does reduce the barrier to entry. and we're already a pretty low barrier of entry yeah. kind of business, you know? Yeah. One, at one point, uh, and I don't remember, like I said, I don't remember if it came from your team or I read it somewhere. Like you are one of the lowest barriers of entry to mm -hmm. get into the franchise mm -hmm. universe, which is what uh, number one, strong brand equity and two yeah. low barrier to entry makes it a really, really enticing thing to jump into and be a part of. Yeah. I mean, most QSR to jump into QSR, uh, we'll, and QSR, for those of you who aren't in this space, is quick service restaurant. <laughs> quick service restaurant, you know, will approach a million dollars and over a million dollars, right? And and ours is, you know, 210000 plus or minus 10%. I mean, there, it now that's still a lot of money to a lot of people, but what you got to show up with is about $70,000, right? So um, that makes it possible or probable for just a lot more people. Absolutely. And so I want to leave you with this story because I haven't told you this yet, but I, I think this will, this will leave your, your week off right. The other day I was driving down the street. Actually, it was, it was Saturday. I was driving down the street with my wife and there's a big bee on this like very busy street that we're driving down. And out in front was just this cute, they were probably 70, this cute couple sitting with an umbrella on two chairs, drinking Big B coffee and just waving <laughs> at people. And we, we were gone for like an hour and a half. So we went by them the first time and haunt yep. and then came back and they were still there. And I thought like, and I mean this for real, where else, what other brand do you see two people spending their Saturday morning out just waving at randos with a cup of coffee in their hand? That's right. Well, we love people and people love us. And that's yes, the you do. You know? All right, my friend, as always, it's been a pleasure. Have an amazing week. We will talk to you next week. Bye.